855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. That's what we need to do is change the lock on our back door because the uh, invasion is ongoing. We need to do more than change the lock on our back door with Mexico. We need to seal the back door. We need to seal the back door with our National Guard and our military. We need to pull our military out of Korea and put the military on the border with Mexico. That's only the beginning. And as I said to you, the big story is we lost the battle, not the war. And you've got to stop reading just headlines. What's required now is, is work, hard work on your part. Many of you figure it'll all work out in the end. You figure, look, I can't do anything about it. Well, take a look, look at what that's gotten you. Say, oh, I can't do anything about it. Take a look at what Obama's doing to this nation because you've been neutralized. I haven't been neutralized. I'm still fighting. The flames still fly out of my soul every day. Can anyone listening to this show say to me that you know men 30 years younger than me who have more fire than I do for this nation? Tell me who they are because I'll tell you who they are. You don't know who they are. They're in Afghanistan. They're in Iraq. They're in places we don't even know. They're soldiers. They're sailors. They're Marines. They're assassins for the CIA. They're the ones with the real fire. You need to do something. We almost lost World War II. I'm trying to tell you the story. Did you know we almost lost World War II? Did you know that that almost happened? Yes, we're losing battle after battle. But we can turn it around. There were many times in World War II that we could have lost the war. And many of you wouldn't be here had we lost the war. Had the Eddies who lie on the ground right now. Can you lower the music? Had the Eddies who lie on the ground right now not given their lives to beat Hitler, you'd be a lampshade or a bar of soap. You need to stand up and fight this leftist, communist, Islamist invasion. Dig in, move forward, fight back. I'll tell you how to do it right here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I don't know about you, but listen to that music. I start to shake. I start to shudder. Every fiber in my being wants to fight. I want to go out in the street and organize 10 million people to take over the country. I mean, I will not do it. We don't do that. We don't rebel in America. We don't have revolutions. We let the revolutionary in the White House take over the country and crap on everything decent. We let the left-wing vermin, the perverts, the anti-Americans, the anti-military, anti-family, anti-church, anti-God, anti-children, anti-decency, we let them take over. We don't fight. They do. We let them take over the media. We don't fight. We let them do it. We let all of the lowest take the highest positions. They sell us out. They undermine us. They stab us in the back. They undermine the cops with the Black Lives Matter. Bunch of rabble in the gutters of New York yesterday, re led by a, a vermin from Hollywood who made his fortune with violent movies, Tarantino, what Taranto, whatever his name is. Who pays attention to this, this drug-addicted fool? Can you imagine the day that they're burying a cop? A black cop at that, killed by a black thug, thug at that, that the, the, the SS of our time, the SA of our time, the brown shirts of our time, Black Lives Matter marches in New York City against police brutality. And who's leading the parade? A white communist lout. A man who makes his fortune putting out one violent movie after another. So they fight. They've won. They've won one battle after another. I don't suggest that we're going to take over Hollywood. I don't suggest Spielberg, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Geffen, and the other secret hands that run Hollywood and the image machine. I don't suspect that they're going to change their tune anytime soon. I don't suspect that any day now they're going to wake up and say, holy God, we're just liable to be swept away ourselves if we don't stand up for the country. I don't expect that to happen. Business will go on as usual amongst these people. They don't even know what's going on around them. I don't expect a Boxer Rebellion in the United States. Look up the Boxer Rebellion. I've been to many Double Ten parades in San Francisco's Chinatown. I know what they are. Most Americans look at it, they think it's just funny with dragons marching in the street. Again, they look at the surface. 
They don't look at the substance of what the parade represents. They don't understand that the Chinese rebelled against Western influence. They rebelled against the opium. They rebelled against the missionaries who were basically stealing their own culture and religion, by the way, incidentally. And so I don't expect those things to happen here. But I do expect you to stop the Muslim invasion of America before it's too late. I do expect you to understand that the Republicans are in cahoots with Hillary. I do hope you understand that an entire generation has been numbed by medication. I gave an interview Saturday morning, my first interview of this book tour. I'm calling it a virtual book tour because I don't actually do book tours. Other authors have to do the 10 city tour. It's horrible. It's very hard. I did them for many years before I had radio. Sitting in hotel rooms, sitting in green rooms, getting three minutes of fame on a radio or television show. That's if you're not bumped for some slut that slipped on the, uh, on a banana peel in Hollywood. I'll tell you those stories one day. But anyway, here I am. I started Saturday, gave an interview to Breitbart News and a, an interview that is unparalleled, by the way, in its, in its, uh, depth. I spoke with a young man named Alexander Marlow, who's Breitbart News editor in chief. He's a young man who knows what's going on. He's dedicated his life to the entire conservative battle, as have many people on Breitbart. Not all, many. But he's one of the true ones. And it was an amazing interview. And I'll tell you more about it later. But I want to get back to you. I said we lost the battle, not the war. It's because you're only reading the headlines. You have to understand the details of the war that is being waged against us by our leaders, against us by Islamic fascists, against us by our so-called educators, against us by our clergy, against us by our government scientists. The list goes on and on. The refugee invasion is a definite loss for Western civilization, but it is only one battle. I need you to get involved. And again, during World War II, I have to go back to you again, the same story. We almost lost the war. We could have lost the war. Had Hitler abided by the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and not launched Operation Barbarossa, Germany would likely have won the war. Did you know that? And was it not also for sabotage in the military plants, sabotage primarily by slave laborers who also didn't give up? That's such an important point. It's so important that you hear me. Here were mainly Jews who had been enslaved, and the smartest ones were put to work for the war machine of Hitler. And they sabotaged the war machine. They didn't roll over and die, as the media would have you believe. They sabotaged Germany's industrial might, especially Germany's jet fighters, the ME-262 and the JG-7. Had there been no sabotage in Germany's war plants, those jets would have been in full production and online years earlier while the British Meteor, a jet fighter, was only on the drawing board. But as it was, the ME-262 flew almost a year ahead of the Meteor, and Lockheed didn't have the P-80, the first U.S. jet fighter, ready until Korea, six years later. With large-scale production and deployment of the Messerschmitt 262, as late as spring 1944, Germany could have owned the skies. And with bases at Brussels and Lille, the Swallow could have not only stopped Allied bombing of Germany, but have easily escorted bombers to London and wiped London off the map. But as I said to you, the slave laborers sabotaged the war plants. You may not know this. Did they give up? They already lost everything. They lost their freedom, didn't they? They were enslaved. They're working in a slave labor camp in, in, in military factories in Germany. Did they give up? No, they didn't give up, damn it. Stop with the defeatism. Stop listening to the drug addicts in the Republican Party, the old drunks like Boehner. Stop giving up. Now is the time to fight before you are, in fact, enslaved. We got plenty of time to fight back, but you need to know what the battle is, who you're fighting, and what to do. Right now, there's nobody leading you. Nobody. Most people on the radio sit and moan and groan every day, all day long. Founding fathers this, Jefferson that. How much can you listen to that crap about 200 years ago? It's a different ball game today, and you need a different war plan. And I give you the war plan. Nobody else gives you the war plan. I am the architect of the new America. 
And I'm not going to sit there waiting for someone to say, oh, you're great, Savage. You did it again. You're the leader. I don't need anyone to tell me what I am. I know who I am. And I need you, the Savage Army, to understand it. Because you can go out there and change the course of human events. You can stop this devil in the White House. You can stop all of them. It's only you who could stop them. There is no political structure to stop them. Only you, the people, can stop them. And I lay it all out in the book, Government Zero. 41 action plans. You think it's a joke? Do you think it's just a hype to sell a book? Well, I pity you. If you're that cynical that you don't see what's really going on, and you don't see how much I really care about this nation, then I pity you. I don't have any disrespect for you. I just pity you that you think everything is a joke and everything is a con and everything is a is a, a con. Everything is a con to get you to spend a dollar. My friends, there are people who actually love this country. Only you never see them. You rarely ever see them. They're in military uh, locations around the globe. They're all over the globe, but you don't see them. Just last week, one of them died. Delta Force man, four children, Oklahoma. And what did Barry send him to do that he died? He sent him to rescue a bunch of Iraqi military who had been captured by ISIS. There was not one American in that bunch that was saved by our Delta Force. Not one American was saved. But one of our bravest died because Barry sent him to his death. He wasted our Delta Force on the Iraqi military. Can you believe that we have such a lunatic as commander-in-chief? Can you imagine that we're in such a state and no one says a word? Now, I could go on and on with you and talk about the idiots in the media. What good is it going to do? It's you who count. There are, do you know how many of you there are? My estimate, 30 to 50 million of you. Do you realize what could happen if you were organized against this leftist Islamist machine, which I call the progressive Islamist juggernaut? Do you have any idea what power you have? If you're not distracted by issues such as a uh, woman's rights, uh, gay marriage and abortion, if you stop thinking about those issues for a while and really think about borders, language and culture, that's not to say that abortion is not a big issue. Everyone in Planned Parenthood should be in prison for conducting a genocide against the unborn. I've said that. They should be in prison. Even Hitler didn't sell baby body parts. Even Hitler's Germany didn't sell baby body parts. That's how far we've fallen as a nation. And what one person does with another behind closed doors, whatever the sexual behavior may be, I could give a darn less. As long as children are not bothered, hey, it's a free country. If you want to disgrace your body, if you want to disgrace what God gave you, if you want to mix up the entire world with your thing, go ahead and do it. It's not my business. But to sit and attack these people every day in a subtle way only drives the women and drives young people away from your message. And that's how the left has won. It's been a 30-year campaign. So I'll take a few calls here at 855-407-282. We have lost the battle, not the war. I'll come back and talk about how close the USA was to losing World War II. Was it not for those who fought a subterranean war against Hitler and, Germ and, and Japan? Do you know that the V-1 and V-2 rockets were light years ahead of Allied technology? Did you know that? And did you know that our own space program relied significantly on German scientists and technology developed under Hitler? Mainly the scientists led by Werner von Braun. Did you know we wouldn't have had a space program at all, was it not for the German scientists? That's a whole separate story. And had Heisenberg, Assau, been given appropriate facilities and had the heavy water experiments not been sabotaged, Hitler would have had atomic bombs at Stalingrad, and he would have used them at Normandy. And it would have been a simple matter to deliver one in the invasion fleet by means of a conventional JU-88 or a Henkel 177, either by free fall or possibly on a reconfigured Henschel HE-293 or HE-294. He could have launched it on a missile. He could have launched it on a missile and wiped out our invasion fleet. But why didn't he? Why were the V-1 and V-2 rockets uh, not used? Why? Because of sabotage in the war plants by slaves, slave laborers, mainly Jews. And also another factor. is a great waste of money, resources, and labor on the extermination camps and the extermination of Jews and others 
many of whom could have been part of Germany, had the mad lunatic, 